Court of California in and for the County of Sacramento is now in session. The Honorable Bumi Owain presiding. Please be seated. I'm Bumi Owani. I'm the presiding judge of the Sacramento Superior Court. To make it to the position of being the first um, African American presiding judge of the Sacramento Superior Court, it says how far we've come as a community in that when our constituents come through the door, black and brown constituents, they should be able to think that the court serves their interests and that the court can adjudicate their interests fairly and that the court is representative of them. I grew up in London, South London. Well, it's a melting pot of immigrants. It's in the north of London. Um, we grew up with Greeks, Turks, uh, West Indians, Trinidadians, Jamaicans, Nigerians, Ghanaians. It was where our parents emigrated to and they put us in communities. So my father was an accountant and my mother, she basically gave up her career in order to support my father advancing in his career. I have five siblings. The process of telling them was that I wanted to be a lawyer was by default. Because frankly, my father you know, was first generation immigrant and he had made up his mind that for all the sacrifices that he had made, his children were going to be successful. And his definition of successful meant you were going to be one of these professions. And the professions, as he lined us up, because remember there were five, it was going to be doctor, lawyer, accountant, architect, engineer. No school teachers, no psychologists, no uh, nothing that wasn't you to be in practice or business for yourself. And I knew I did not want to be an accountant, despite the fact that he named his firm Collinson and Daughter in anticipation that I would join, join him. So I chose law. Uh, it wasn't because I'd been introduced to people that were lawyers. It wasn't because I'd watched TV shows of lawyers. It was just basically one of the five choices and I felt like it would be the best fit after an experience in the courthouse. But I'd gone to court, uh, Tottenham Magistrates Court, the courthouse where I grew up. Um, and there was a certain circumstance going on. It wasn't unusual for kids in our neighborhood to end up in a courthouse somehow at some point in time, either there yourself or visiting with somebody else who was there. And on this particular occasion, I remember being overwhelmed with just the hustle and the bustle. The fact that there were a lot of people that looked like us, because it was Tottenham, it was an inner city, there was a lot of black and brown people, and the lawyers, which we called solicitors, none of them looked like us. The judge didn't look like us, the clerks didn't look like us. We were clearly there in a category as defendant or observers. And I watched the interaction between lawyers and clients, and some of them were very young. I remember thinking to myself, I could do this. Not only could I do it, I would enjoy doing this. And I thought even at that young age of 17 that, hmm, we really need people that look like us in this place because it feels so incredibly intimidating. Now to me now, sitting here, that just seems a lot to sort of unpackage that why would I think about that at 17 years old? But sometimes that's what it takes. Yes, you have the chatter, the advice, the counsel of your parents, doesn't quite stick. But when you actually walk into a place, all of that seed that had been sown in your heart and in your mind by your parents, suddenly it starts to bear fruit because it's exactly what he had talked about. He said, don't waste the opportunities that you have. The people need you to be the best that you can be so that you can give back. It will serve your interests and it will serve your community's interest. And in that moment, I saw it. I looked in the courtroom and I said, there's nobody here that looks like us except if you're a defendant, how much different it could it be if I could be a lawyer? Without faith, all of this would be impossible. It'd be a chasing after the wind. It's my faith that's grounded me. It's my faith that's given me courage when I've been discouraged. It's my faith that's caused me to hope when I felt hopeless. And then when you do succeed, it's my faith that grounds me and makes me not believe my own press. It's my faith that lets me believe that there's things that are bigger than you and that there's a purpose 
I believe this is his purpose for me. 